This is dumb. <laughs> oh. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Today we're talking about two things. One, cause marketing. What is it and why should you do it? Two, we ourselves here at Cinch IT are announcing that we are hosting our first ever charity event. All right, for anyone who follows us on Instagram, you might already know this. If you don't follow us on Instagram, go ahead. I'll put Cinch IT's handle right here. I'll put my handle right here. You can be my 15th follower if you'd like. Um, but we recently announced that we're doing a 100 mile ruck march for a charity organization called Why Me and Sherry's House. I'm gonna introduce you to them and talk about the event in just a little bit. But first off, we said we're gonna talk about cause marketing what it is and why you should do it. So first, what is it? Cause marketing is when you and your organization give back to either your local community or a national cause. The marketing side comes into play when you share that with the world. At the end of the day, I believe that businesses and people want to do business with like minded people with companies that care about the local community and some really great causes because it's important to let people and other businesses know the type of business you are. So before I introduce you to why me and Sherry's house, let me tell you a little bit about the event to give you some context of what we're talking about. The event we're hosting is a 100 mile ruck march spread out over four days. So the competitors are hiking 25 miles a day for four days straight completely self supported. They're hiking with a backpack or a rucksack that has everything they need to support themselves for four days. We solicited some of the best business owners in our local community to take up this challenge. We're also trying to raise as much money as possible, obviously for the organization. So what we've done is every single night while the athletes and the competitors are setting up camp, we're gonna throw a little party at each one of the local breweries to continue to raise money throughout the event. So the first night is at a local brewery called Milk Room. Then the second night is at a brewery called Stone Cow. And the last one is at a brewery called Oakholm. Thank you so much to all those breweries that have been amazing at helping us organize this event. I couldn't thank you guys more. We're gonna have a party every single night for them uh, or at their facilities to help raise money. We're inviting family and friends out. And also, it's going to be very important to encourage these competitors along the way. We're, of course, going to start and end at Why Me Sherry's house right here in Worcester. That's what it's all about. We want to end there for anyone who actually completes the 100-mile ruck march. So let me tell you about who Why Me and Sherry's house is. They are a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing support to families faced with childhood cancer. The organization is actually created and run by parents that have actually experienced this firsthand. They've lived through it. They have an amazingly dedicated staff and group of volunteers that are so passionate about providing service to families the moment their child is diagnosed with cancer. I recently had Why Me and Sherry's House Executive <laughs> Director David wanted. Hagen on my uh, podcast to learn more the about their organization. At the end of the episode, I presented this fundraising idea to David and he was completely on board. I love the sound of that. You know, this this idea of, of you know, the rucksack hike sort of harkens back to, you know, those very you know, beginning days at Why Me when they were selling hot dogs on street corner for a buck and and, and Terry did his big yeah. run. And I don't know if it's why Terry did it, but we talked about it. We actually had a meeting about it this morning as well. And one of the things we talked about is we said, you know, why a ruck, ruck, ruck march? And one, I'm an ex-military guy. So putting a rucksack, a heavy rucksack on my back and saying, walk forever, I'm, I can do that. Um, and for a lot of people that are, that are going to volunteer to do this, we know it's going to be painful. 100 miles with 35 plus pounds on your back is going to tear up your feet and it's going to be painful and stuff like that. Um, but to your point earlier, I have three children. Mm -hmm. I'm incredibly fortunate that they're healthy. 
And so I, I'm not the person to have that bereavement conversation. I, I, I couldn't even imagine it. So when we're doing this and these volunteers are going through, when their feet hurt, when their shoulders hurt, when they're in pain, doing it for the right cause, knowing how much pain those families go through is what helps you get through an event like this right. and, and makes you feel proud to raise money for such a good event. Um, and so we thought it was fitting. And the rucksack is a metaphor, right? It's a metaphor for, um, for burden sure. and, and for shouldering someone else's burden. Um, you know, it's, it's a lovely idea and, and, you know, that I love that you're going to do it, you know, in the community, but you're also going to do it in state parks and that kind of thing, because it's, um, you know, this is what everybody learned in the, in the pandemic is it, it's about family and it's about, uh, being outside and connecting with nature and rejuvenating your spirit. Yep. Um, so on so many levels, I think it's just an awesome idea. <laughs> well, so I thank you. That. Super <laughs> no. excited. That's yeah. great. For the past few weeks, we've been planning out the logistics of this entire event. Now I'm starting to feel like it's actually a legit good hike. Yeah. Now I'm starting to think I have to start training for this. <laughs> the one day is You're like, we were in Worcester. We just walked <laughs> the to... The one day is fine. It's just, just four days of it. I'm like... We just walked to Barrie, Massachusetts. <laughs> I mapped it out just like I hike. Those are your turns. So a left turn on the on the 31 South. Can't even bike it right now because of the weather. Give it one. Give it one warm week if this is all gone. Uh, we don't have bikes anyways. Let's work on getting bikes. Yeah. Time to get pumped up for a four-hour bike ride. Pretty sure Brandon's never gonna be able to use this because copyright. That's not how it goes. No. I'm still recording, but. How's that not how it goes? You gotta go here. And then, remember that extension I was talking about? Yeah. Did you put it in here or is it in the car still? The extension's in the car. That should be a pretty good I'm shot. I'm gonna break that. Oh, you're gonna break that. <laughs> it's, look at it. Day two, mapping out trails on the mountain bikes. <laughs> I can do it. You can't do it, you put your feet down, that doesn't count. I didn't fall. This is dumb. <laughs> uh, I'll just try this a little bit. We can always call Danny, stranded. <laughs> You gotta act while you're doing all this. <laughs> all right. Bottom line is, this sucks. Fallen th two, three times? Three for you. Three, three, three for you, zero for me. Well, you're going, you're driving <laughs> half a mile an hour. But uh, I think we're gonna call it a day. Um, this is just gonna take forever at this point. And uh, we'll come back probably uh, next weekend. And hopefully by then, this ice and snow will be gone. And hopefully we can just get bang out this whole section. And we have a lot of these sections to map out until we uh, almost get the so We're out of here. 181 is my max heart rate. Or what, you like blow up? Um, no, they just say like, anything over that, you're might want to stop. Yeah, but you're probably gonna have a heart attack. Possibly. Time to map out. I think this is called Boy Scout Reservation Trail or something like that. Do you remember the name of it? I think you were close. If Boy, you something know. like yeah, that. Close. Um, out in where were we? Paxton. Yeah. I think Paxton. So anyways, we're gonna map this one out. Um, we have the distance mapped out using an app called Footpath, um, but today we're gonna test it out for accuracy. Uh, we've already found out that Footpath had some courses that we wanted to take or some routes we wanted to take that actually were like dead ends and you couldn't actually go that way. Um, so each section of this trail, this 100 mile ruck, we're actually, over a period of time, gonna do every single one of them just to verify that they're, 
that they're good and they're accurate and we're gonna measure it out so that we're not making people do you know 105 miles or even 98 miles which would be worse right uh, we want to make sure we're truly doing 100 miles so short little ruck are you feeling Greg ready to go <laughs> I, I lost equipment I'm ready to go hiking now yeah Greg's first day out with us lost a $250 flashlight so. Well, we know where it is. It's not technically lost. It's, <laughs> it's just, you know. It, it may be stolen. <laughs> it might not be the full week of that. It's not that cold. <laughs> Don't get... Good training. <laughs> Time to walk them dry. All right. Let's dive into it. Let's, everybody has a packet in front of them. I'm gonna fly through the paperwork and then we can just get into a lot of questions we have. What most people don't realize is when a child gets diagnosed with cancer, they might go to, let's say, UMass or somewhere in Boston, typically for treatment. What most people don't realize is one of the family members, husband, wife, whoever, literally has to quit their job because it's full-time treatment. You're literally going to UMass every single day. You quit your job. And, and a lot of people, are, because we have such good healthcare up here, they physically have to relocate. So Sherry's house, the families actually stay. Let's say it's a mom and a child, they'll actually stay in this house free of charge so they can go back to UMass all day long, keep coming back, back they have a place to stay for free. Um, Brandon has done a lot of hiking with me, Jay has, Troy has, right? 100%, we've actually taken wrong turns. The GPS, the footpath app, we've been using for three weeks, it's really freaking accurate. If you get off path, you'll be off path for no more than like, what's the most random, 50 feet before you can tell on the app that you're off path and you're able to backtrack. All of the trails are marked, but you still have to pay attention that you're on the right trail. Greg is going to be the safety officer. He is going to be in a pickup truck. He's going to be with our fantastic nurse if you guys need medical care. If anybody's never hiked before, hiker hunger is a real friggin' thing. You will eat more food than you ever eat in your life after usually about two days. Your third day, whew. As far as fundraising goes, everybody got my email for the link to create your own fundraising page, right? I know Jess set up hers already. You guys all got that email? So, well, what, I'm, what we're trying to do is set like a minimum of like $500 for each of us. That's it. If we each raise $500. My, my personal ask, if you guys could set it for like a thousand, I think that'd be awesome. Because we're gonna have about 15 competitors there. That'd be badass if we could raise $15,000 by just the people in this room, just putting together a page. Jess and I put our pages out on Friday. Like I'm at 650, you're right at 650 already with like one social media post. Right, Tucker, you donated to mine, so now you gotta donate to your own as well. <laughs> I gotta donate to yours now. Appreciate it, we're gonna have a ton of fun, and we're all gonna suffer together. Cheers, guys. Cheers. As you can see, we've been very busy planning routes, meeting with athletes, putting packets together. It's been an absolute blast, but we're determined to make sure this is an extremely successful event that we can do year after year and do it bigger and bigger every single year. If you guys are at all interested in donating to this amazing cause and this fantastic organization, I'll put a link in the description below. Please feel free to donate whatever you feel comfortable with. Every penny counts. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. As always, future videos, it's all about forming our franchise. You're gonna see us grow and expand. We got new territories we're opening, new businesses that are opening up, existing franchisees that are doing phenomenal things, but we'll also continue to update on this event. It's a huge part of who we are and what we're doing, and we hope to bring you guys along for the ride. Thanks again for checking out the video, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.